Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. So today we're going to talk about one of my favorite things. Fan control. I know it sounds crazy, but I am a huge fan, puns, of uh, balanced noise levels as well as temps. Now there's a few different ways you can do fan control. Typically you can use uh, bio settings if you want. You can use um, motherboard software if you would like. Things like uh, Dragon Center from MSI, for example. Um, and there's a couple of different, you know, third-party apps out there. You know, anybody that's old school will remember SpeedFan and um, its ability to control fans. But what I'm going to take you guys through today is an actual app called Fan Control. Uh, it's off of GitHub, and I'll, I'll drop the link in the description below and where to get it. But this thing has been absolutely incredible. Um, it puts every motherboard manufacturer software I've used to absolute complete shame. And uh, you really do get full control and you can like dial it in as much as you want. So without further ado, let's hop in and check it out. And I'll show you guys how I keep this thing as cool as I can while keeping it as quiet as I can. All right, so this is going to be the, uh, the web page. This is, like I said, on GitHub. Link is in the description below. Um, it just gives you, obviously, uh, a pretty good overview um, of all the different features. When it comes to updates and whatnot, this thing is updated constantly. Like, I'll load in and it'll be like, hey, update available. And then it's optional whether or not you want to update uh, or not. I should also mention uh, this is free. So, you know, the, uh, the author's got a donate button. So if you use it and you do find that you like it, please, you know, feel free to, you know, buy them a cup of coffee or whatever it may be. But um, it really is good. So I'll drop this link in the description below. And now let's take a look at the actual software. All right, so once you got the program downloaded and everything and you open it up, the first time you come in here, you're not actually gonna have any of, um, any of these controls down here. There won't be any curves set up. There's no predetermined curves, unless that's changed in an earlier update which it's possible. I haven't done a fresh install on this in a while, but um, that'll most likely be blank. And then up top, you're going to have um, the fans that you have access to, and you're also going to see probably additional fan headers um, that aren't available. Uh, and what I've done for those is I just like click hide and get rid of them because I don't need to see, you know, uh, the 12 or 13 selections that I have. Uh, I only keep the, the things that are relevant up. So anyway, so um, when you need to add a curve, uh, in the bottom right, you're going to have a little plus sign. And then you're going to be able to add sync, mix, flat, target, graph, and linear. So what I use mainly are uh, graphs and um, uh, mixes. And so if I were to add a graph, it would give me a chart just like this. That would be pretty standard. I think it, it does just a, a diagonal linear curve. And you can go into this. You can give it a name. You, from the drop down, you pick whatever sensor that you want it to read. And so for the GPU, I obviously have it checking out the GPU on my 2080. And then you click on edit. When you click on edit, you're going to get um, this here. If you've used any kind of fan control software before, this is very, very familiar. And so what I've done here is I have this set to kick up to uh, 43%. I think is actually what that's on, 42, 43%. At about 45 to 46 degrees. Uh, and then from there, it'll ramp up at 65 and then 70, and then it'll max at 75. And so if the GPU hits 75 degrees, this chart will have capped. Now you can do response times in order to add uh, delay to this if you would like. Um, I leave both of these, um, what do you call it? Completely flat uh, or uh, completely standard. So um, as in, in, in short, I need at least a two degree change before it will kick anything and adjust anything. And then the response time is uh, how long the change has to be present before it will do it. So, you know, if you're getting small little blips and stuff, you can adjust this and then your fans will, will chill out. These controls are important. If you happen to have a fan that is constantly like, boom, boom, boom. And it's like, you know, it's just, it can be uh, fatiguing, if you will, uh, listening to your fans just continually spike. And so you can use these controls to stop that from happening. So they're uh, quite a bit, uh, they're, uh, it's uh, more smooth, if you will. So that is my GPU curve. I then have another setting for my VRM, which is the power delivery. If you look at your motherboard, typically it's the big heat sink on the top and uh, on the back right behind, right around the CPU. Um, this is the area that provides power. And so under heavy load, that gets hot, those heat sinks get warm. And so in this case, I've got a 140 millimeter fan like 
basically sitting on top of those heat sinks. And so I have selected uh, the proper um, heat uh, sensor off of my motherboard for the VRM. And then last but not least is my SSD. The SSD is the other thing that I'm gonna be taking a look at. And so I select the temperature two off of the Samsung SSD because that is it's the sensor that typically runs warmer. Uh, and I have that selected here. Now I have, you'll notice a uh, second GPU and SSD uh, graph. Now the reason for this, okay, is my rear fans are 120, my top fans are 140. The 140s will kick on and spin at a lower percent. And that's why the beginning of these graphs are so much shorter than what we have like over here for the GPU um, and for the SSD even. And so I do this because I would rather my 140s turn on first to get some heat out of the case. And then the 120 in the back turns on when it absolutely has to, because that's going to be the louder fan that's noisier because it's smaller and it spins faster. So you can see how, when you start to play with your fan configurations and these curves, how you really can maximize your cooling while minimizing your noise. So what I do is I, I take these graphs, right? Once they're set up, but I don't actually run any of my fans um, on the graph. What I will do for this is, uh, this one's actually set incorrectly. That should be top front. Is I then add um, right here, you can go to mix. I add a mix. And now what this is gonna do is this takes a look at two separate curves and we'll assign those curves to a fan. So this is gonna take a look at the, uh, which one of the items in the list is the maximum temp, and then it's gonna follow that curve for that fan. So for example, if I'm playing a game and my GPU gets really hot, my SSD doesn't, this rear fan curve, it'll look at GPU first, check the temp, the temp is high, it turns the fan on, uh, and then it'll check the SSD and it'll compare the two curves and whichever curve is asking for the higher speed, that's the one that it will respect. And so you'll see this one's called rear fan. So I have that set to rear fan. I have top rear and a top front as well. And these curves are all set to essentially be a blend of the different curves I've set up for the different fan locations and what, what I want them to uh uh, to cool. So I've got my rear fan is set up to kick on when my GPU gets hot or my SSD gets hot. My top rear kicks on when the GPU gets hot or the VRM area gets hot, right? So if I'm rendering video and you know, like I'm making this YouTube video and I go to render the video, uh, I'm not using a whole lot of my GPU. I'm using my CPU. That area is going to get hot. So it will, you know, it'll take a look at the GPU temp and be like, no, you don't need to turn on. It'll also look at the VRM temp and be like, okay, you need to turn on. And then so it'll kick up that way. And then the front is uh, based off of the GPU and the SSD. And so I've got a lot of different functions between the different fans for the different components. And this allows me to really kind of dial in and um, get my fans to spin as little as possible while maintaining the lowest temps I can. A couple other things on this is in the settings here, you can do, uh, you can show the hidden cards again if you want to bring those back up. Uh, you can just totally hide fan speed cards. Um, you can disable storage sensors if you really want to, because that list of sensors is pretty long. And then I would obviously start minimized with Windows. And then there's this thing here, the display icon temp. So for this, what we've got is the ability to select any sensor that this thing picks up, okay? And then you can mark this box here and display tray icon. And so what that does is I'll slide this over here. That should, yeah, that'll show. Perfect. And so now down here, I have the, uh, my SSD temp that displays down, you know, in my system tray all the time. So I've got, you know, MSI afterburner coming in, letting me know my GPU temp, letting me know my CPU temp. And then also now the fan control is reporting my SSD temp. So for me, the three most important temps in my case are being displayed at all times down in my system tray. And that's super helpful just to kind of keep an eye on everything that's going on. Um, outside of that, you've got a couple other things. Uh, it has light mode and dark mode. You can do theme colors and that'll pick up, uh, or that'll bring up two color pickers. Uh, and then you can kind of, you know, decide what you want to do. So I had mine set to, you know, dark gray and uh, purple matches the stream theme, all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, and then there's, you know, some libraries, some emails and uh, the donate button. Again, if you guys do use the software, recommend, you know, um, sending uh sending the dev uh, you know a cup of coffee if you will once you have everything here set up how you want it just make sure that in the top right you save your configuration um 
and then you're good to go. You can manually check for update. It'll do that on its own. Uh, and then there's a couple other things. There's match fans automatically. I'm honestly not totally sure what that does. I have not used that the same as uh, detect fans activation. I believe detect fans activation, uh, it figures out what is the min percent that the, span, the fans need to spin at before they'll actually turn on, right? And so what I mean by that is my rear fan, if I set that at like 15%, it won't spin. If I set it to 20%, it won't spin. And so I believe that that option is just so the software can take a look. It'll see when it gets a RPM reading out of the fan and then it'll save it so it knows what is the minimum setting uh, for all of your fans. All right, and there you guys have it. Hopefully you guys found that uh, useful. I use this program like crazy. It is better than anything I've seen from Asus and MSI and other third-party apps. And it really does give the best control I think I've found in fan software. I should also mention it's super light on resources. Uh, if I pull up my task manager right now, uh, it is using exactly 0.1% uh, of my CPU uh, and uh, less than 120 megs of RAM. So it is extremely low on uh, usage and overhead, which is awesome. You know, if you load up something like MSI Dragon Center and you take a look at that, some of those programs can be an absolute resource hog. Uh, so this is a nice lightweight alternative for those who want full control without all of the bloat that you usually get from manufacturer's software. So that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Catch me live twitch.tv slash Cardo two to three nights a week, three to four nights a week. And uh, as always, guys, stay humble. Catch you in the next one. Peace out.